Hello everyone, my name is Marlon and um, I'll be speaking tonight about Acts chapter 7. So I don't know about you, but if I read the book of Acts, it's really like an action movie. Uh, when I see the, the name of the book Acts, sometimes I think it's probably short for action movie. Um, but yeah, no, that's just a joke. It's, it's probably not for that. Um, but yeah, it's really sometimes when I read these amazing stories, I think like, wow, can this really be in the Bible? And it's really just an a awesome book full of crazy things happening. And um, yeah, let's see what chapter 7 tells us. Um, in chapter 6, we, we saw that uh, the apostles chose the, the seven guys to, to serve. And, and they said that those seven guys were full of the Holy Spirit. And one of those guys was Stephen. His name was Stephen. And we read about this Stephen um, at the end of chapter 6, uh, the, the Sanhedrin, they accuse him and they say um, in, the, in the scripture, they say, this man never ceases to speak against this holy place and the law. So they accuse him on two things. Um, they say he speaks against the holy place, which is the temple and the, the law, which they follow. Now, it's so amazing to see um, in Stephen's speech how he addresses these two things. Uh, if you read that speech, when I read the, read the speech that he gave first, I didn't really um, understand what he was saying. But after a few times reading it, you, you start seeing what he's, what he's doing. So the first thing that they accused him of is the Holy Temple. And, and let's look at what he responds um, in, in, this, in this way for the Holy Temple. So he, he reminds them, he, goes, he almost gives them like a history lesson. He tells them, but... Um, God was with the Israelites when they were in the wilderness. God was with Joseph when he was uh, in jail and how he gave Joseph favor in the sight of Pharaoh. So he points out in many ways that even though um, there wasn't a temple back then, God's presence was still with them. God was still um, moving in their midst. And it's just amazing to see that uh, God's temple is it's important, but it's not necessarily the the main thing. God God's saving purposes can still be accomplished um, without the temple. And now Stephen wasn't saying that the temple is bad, but he's saying that we mustn't focus completely just on a physical place because God cannot be contained in a house made of hands, made um, out of a man's hands. In in Acts in the in the chapter seven verse forty eight it says that. Um, Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? So he shows them that um, this accusation that they're bringing against him is completely um, yeah, flawed because we can see that God is... Uh, his presence is everywhere and we are his new temple. Uh, in 1 Corinthians verse um, 3 verse 16 it says that do you not know that your God's that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you. So I want to encourage you to to worship God. We don't have to yes it's amazing to worship God at church together with believers but you can worship God um, in your home. You can worship him at work. You can worship him on your way to work in the car. Um, let's not be shy about where we worship God. And the second thing that they uh, accused him of is uh, really to, uh, because he isn't following the law. Now, an uh, underlying theme through the speech that he gives is he reveals to them that Israel's people in the past, every time God sent a prophet and they rejected him, uh, they kept on rejecting the people that God sent to them. And this is very interesting because every time that God sent someone, uh, for some reason they rejected them. And if you look at Moses' story, Stephen, Stephen uh, shows out that Moses was raised up by Egyptians. He was raised up almost in a sense in a worldly way, yet God used him to save the Israelites. And just like, um, and then later in that story, the Israelites, when Moses was on Mount Sinai, they, they said, let us make for ourselves a calf um, because this Moses is nowhere to be found. Um, and so the Israelites rejected him. And just like the Israelites, Israelites rejected Moses, now the Israelites in this time of Acts 7, they're rejecting Jesus, the Messiah. And just like Moses, who, who didn't have the, the correct almost background, 
Um, so Jesus coming from Nazareth might have seemed like he didn't have the right background, but yet unexpectedly God uses him to, um, to save us all. So if you think about it, it's not Stephen who didn't follow the law, but it is actually the, the Sanhedrin, those who accused him, they rejected God's sent one, um, Jesus, who we know came to fulfill the law. Um, they rejected him, and so they were actually the ones that didn't um, follow the law. So I want to encourage you, um, yeah, to just like Stephen, to defend your faith, to not be shy about um, speaking up, and let us not be silent. Uh, it's so amazing how Stephen stood up, and he was even he defended his faith until the point of death. And in the last part of the chapter, we see that they were these um, Sanhedrin guys were very angry. They they were outraged and they went and they stoned him. It's amazing to see the last two prayers that Stephen prayed was exactly what Jesus said. He said, uh, Lord Jesus, into your hands I commit my spirit and do not hold the sin against them. And after that death of Stephen, the persecution of the church went crazy. It was like um, that's when the persecution started for the early church. And I want to challenge you today um, of, to think about where where are the areas in my life where I need to, to die to myself? Um, in, in John chapter 12, verse 24, it says that um, unless, a grit of, uh, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground, um, it is alone. But when it dies, it bears much fruit. And that's just amazing. Like if we die to certain things to ourselves, um, God can bear fruit through us. And I want to challenge you, um, it's many times we think if someone holds a gun to our head, we will say, yes, I'm a Christian, I will die for Christ. But sometimes just to tell your neighbor about Jesus, it's it maybe harder uh, because we need to die to our, just our flesh and, and to overcome that. So, yeah, so I want to encourage you, let's defend our faith where we are in our workplaces, in our communities. And I want to challenge you to think of the areas where you need to, uh, it sounds a bit tough, but where you need to die to yourself a bit. Uh, yeah, so let me pray for you. Father, thank you, Lord, that we can learn so much through through Stephen, Lord, who was through the Holy Spirit, um, filled with the Holy Spirit, Lord. And Father, thank you that that same Holy Spirit is in us, God. Thank you, Lord, that we can defend our faith boldly, Lord. I, I ask, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you will give us the words to say, Lord, when we need to say them, Father God. And yes, Jesus, we ask that you will reveal the places in our hearts, Lord, that we still need to um, die to ourselves a bit, Lord so that your kingdom can come, Lord. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.